This is CBS News Bay Area with Elizabeth Cook. An historic visit to the Bay. The U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk entering our waters. A vessel named after a gay and civil rights pioneer. Harvey was a visionary. He saw this all early, and he knew it had to be a, a movement. Harvey spent a good portion of his life as a champion of equality for everyone, everywhere. Today, we look at the significance of this ship, not only to the military, but also a symbol of how far the military has come. This is a military that has gone from it's illegal to be gay, period, and now we're naming one of our naval ships you know, after how you go. All the work that folks have done, whether they were out or not out at the time, um, that that is not discounted, right? That it is recognized and it's appreciated. It's an exponential difference is what it is and in a positive direction. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm Ryan Yamamoto in for Elizabeth Cook. We know Harvey Milk is one of the Bay Area's most well-known civil and gay rights leaders. The U.S. Navy ship named after him just arrived here for an historic visit. And over the next half hour, we're going to check in with our crew live on the water for more on the ship itself, which is now crossing underneath the Bay Bridge. And the significance of this trip to the Bay. First, though, let's get a look at today's news headlines with Ann McAvick. Well, it's an historic day in the Bay. The first U.S. Navy ship named for an openly gay person, Harvey Milk, just arrived in our waters. It traveled underneath the Golden Gate Bridge in the past hour. And just take a look at the scope of this ship. It is 746 feet. The ship is one of 20 oilers used to move fuel and cargo, the U.S. Navy carrier strike groups, and to other surface forces. This one will be headed to the Middle East and to Gaza. Let's give you a live look right now, and it's still on the move, and now eventually will be docked at piers 30 and 32 along the Embarcadero. Can't see it right here, but it did just pass underneath the Bay Bridge. Let's go live, though, to our Kelsey Thord, who's getting a very unique view of that ship as it's coming in. And you got two views of two bridges and that ship right now traveling underneath the Bay Bridge. How's it going out there, Kelsey? Hey, Ryan. Yeah, it's going good. We hitched a ride with SFPD. We're on one of their marine unit boats, and we've been following this ship all the way into the city. We started out all the way out in the ocean, watched it come under the Golden Gate Bridge, which was a sight to see, and we've just been following it in. As you said, it just passed under the Bay Bridge. It's actually going to be docking over near here at Pier 30 and 32 soon, so we're very close to its final destination. But this ship, just being this close to this ship on this journey into the city here today has been an amazing thing. As you said, this is a ship that that goes around the world and it helps fuel other ships. It also gives supplies to other ships and countries around the world. And this ship, of course, means so much to this city because of its namesake, Harvey Milk. As you said, this is the first ship that's been named after an openly gay person. And Harvey Milk was an icon to the city and to the world. And when it comes to naming ships, that's not a small honor. This is a huge honor for the legacy of Harvey Milk, and we talked to a local professor about naming this ship. It goes to show that there is a permanence um, to that, and that all the work that folks who've done, whether they were out or not out at the time, um, that that is not discounted, right? That it is recognized and it's appreciated and that they are a big part of not just the military community, but just the United States as a whole. And so I think this is an exciting time uh, for folks that want that commemoration to happen. And, and it's, it's good to see that it's finally occurred. And uh, you can see the ship here still coming in. As I said, we're getting very close to where it's about to dock. You know, Ryan, it's too bad there's not a Giants game today because I can see Oracle Park from where we're at. And I'm saying you would have a pretty good view of this ship if you were up in the nosebleeds up there. But it's it's just an amazing view. The weather has been perfect. The water has been perfect. And we're just watching the last little leg of the ship coming into dock. And Kelsey, just, just for our viewers at home who didn't watch the stream, but what was that moment like as it was traveling underneath the Golden Gate? 
you know, it was magical. It was just pure magic watching this massive ship come under the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, that's an iconic bridge. It's, you know, what San Francisco is known for. And to see a ship named after a person that really shaped this city, you know, that moment, it was just, it was amazing. I think Rick and I both just kind of watched in, in awe as it went under. And like I said, the weather has been amazing. The sun is out, it's beautiful. And the ship looks great in the sun. And you can see the city behind the ship right now. Just the whole experience has been great. We've been on this boat now for a couple of hours and we'll probably be on it for a couple more. We're gonna wait until this ship officially docks here and then we'll make our way back in and then we're eventually going to come down back to where this pier is where it's going to be docked and interview some of the people involved with the ship so we're excited it's been a fun day for us out here for sure yeah i'm absolutely jealous I mean, you and rick photographer rick have the best view right now <laughs> of, of the usns harvey mill coming into port thank you very much uh, we'll check back in with you a little bit later on in the show but for those of you who want to see the usns harvey mill will be docked at piers 30 and 32 along the embarcadero in the meantime still ahead we look at how the us navy ship harvey milk is highlighting progress and inclusion after after what for some were some painful memories during their service. And then I was kicked out for being gay. We should be all treated with respect and dignity. And that's really what it's about. And when we come back, how this military ship is now a symbol of change. Well, history in the San Francisco Bay today, the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk is in our waters, just making its way underneath the Bay Bridge, now trying to park itself parallel park at piers 30 and 32. So a best view of this ship will be just along the Embarcadero. And this ship is a nod to civil rights and gay rights pioneer Milk himself served during the Korean War. And the naming of the ship after Harvey Milk is just one sign of a very different U.S. military. More than the one a lot of LGBTQ veterans did experience in their lifetime. And our Max Darrow spoke with one Army vet who reflected on his painful exit from service and some redemption. Years later. Mementos from a major part of Michael Higgins' life are in this box. Oh, heavy box. Photos bring back memories of his time in high school. Jesus, that's me. At Military Academy. I got straight A's. And then memories of his time serving the country. There's the Berlin Brigade Band. The U.S. Army veteran was stationed in Berlin in 1988, and he was proud to be there. It was me. I loved it. But that chapter of his life came to an abrupt halt after a year and a half, when he received a general uh, discharge under honorable conditions. You see on the very bottom here. Punctuated by these words. Admission of homosexuality slash bisexuality. On his DD-214. And then I was kicked out for being gay. At that point in history, military policy explicitly banned gay people from serving. I was actually read my Miranda rights in Berlin, Germany, for being gay. Think about that. <laughs> I was getting death threats from the guys that were willing to save my life the day before they found out I was getting kicked out for being gay. Higgins wasn't the first and certainly wasn't the last service member to have this experience. Three years later, <laughs> President Bill Clinton announced a don't ask, don't tell, hoping to find compromise in the fight over the military's ban on gays and lesbians. It is not a perfect solution. It is not identical with some of my own goals. And it certainly will not please everyone, perhaps not anyone. That it didn't. Don't ask, don't tell, won't work. It was met with protests and legal don't challenges tell, from the get-go. James Zarsa Diaz is an associate professor of history at the University of San Francisco. The whole point of Don't Ask, Don't Tell was, you know, we're not going to ask you, but if you volunteer that information or if you're caught, then you're in trouble. And it kind of created this whole uh, kind of culture of, of stigma and taboo and, and fear. And that's why it was very controversial then and now. But it was the country's policy for 17 years. Our people sacrifice a lot 
for their country. Until 2010. Including their lives. When the Senate repealed it. None of them should have to sacrifice their integrity as well. And President Barack Obama inked it. This is done. Allowing gay, lesbian, and bisexual troops to serve openly. When the repeal occurred, it, it, it was this big sigh of relief after, again, generations of trying to move the needle, especially in the military, uh, an institution that is arguably much more conservative than others. Then in 2021, President Biden overturned the Trump administration's ban on transgender people from serving in the military. What I'm doing is enabling all qualified Americans to serve their country in uniform. Now you have a the commander in chief recognizing people who identify as transgender. This is for real East German money. A lot has changed since Higgins' duty came to a sudden and unceremonious end. It's an exponential difference is what it is and in, in a positive direction. This is a military that has gone from it's illegal to be gay, period, and now we're naming one of our naval ships, you know, after Harvey Milk. And the change of tides has allowed him to rewrite a part of his history. Yeah, this big void on it. <laughs> in 2022, Higgins received new discharge papers okay. inked with the word honorable. I was happy. It's the way it should be because I did serve this country honorably. I didn't do anything wrong. Big picture, he says more can still be done. There's always room for improvement, right? <laughs> yeah. There, and again, that, that's going to be through education. We got to educate and we should be all treated with respect and dignity. And that's really what it's about. But he's grateful to see how much has changed since his days as a young man in uniform. And still ahead, what makes Harvey Milk such an iconic figure right here in the Bay Area and U.S. history? We look at his mission toward equality and how he became such a champion for change. Well, welcome back. You're looking live at the U.S. Navy ship Harvey Milk that just made its way underneath the Golden Gate Bridge and the San Francisco Bay Bridge, now in the San Francisco Bay getting ready to park. I know Kelsey Thord is live, and Kelsey, you have the best view in the house right now following his journey from out on the water. Where are you headed now? Today's been a fun one for sure. Uh, we are watching, like you said, we're watching the Harvey Milk being parked right now. It is almost there. I would say it's within a few couple of feet now from Pier 30 and 32. You know, if you remember back in Fleet Week, this is where the USS John P. Murtha was parked as well. So it's kind of right in between the Bay Bridge and Oracle Park. People, if you're walking down the Embarcadero, you can't miss it. It's a giant ship and it's just about to dock. But, you know, we've been following the ship all the way in through under the Golden Gate Bridge, under the Bay Bridge to its parking place here at the pier. But, you know, the main reason that we're focused on this ship, of course, is the fact that it's named after Harvey Milk. You know, this is a man that is an icon to this city. He has become a world icon when it comes to his fight for LGBTQ rights as well as civil rights. And he has had such an impact on San Francisco and the rest of the world when it comes to those two issues. And to have a ship, a naval ship named after him, he was actually in the military as a younger man, but this is just a huge occasion for him. And this ship was actually christened two years ago, back in 2012, or excuse me, 2021. And when that happened, there were people from across the city, icons of the city, both political and community, talking about what this meant, including Nancy Pelosi. Here's some of what she said at the time. Harvey was a visionary. He saw this all early, and he knew it had to be a, a movement, and he was an effective, not only organizer, but inspiration. And of course, we all know that Harvey Milk's life was cut short back when he was assassinated here in the city. And we all remember that iconic moment when the late Dianne Feinstein came out and made that announcement. Both Mayor Moscone 
and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. Supervisor Dan White. And you know, Ryan, just to go from that moment that was such a dark time in our city's history to now this moment of having this massive naval ship named after such an icon to this city is just remarkable. You know, it seems like so long ago that that happened. And then now, decades later, you know, you heard Diane Feinstein there, another icon of the city now gone, and Nancy Pelosi, of course, an icon of the city. So all of these people coming together, making such an impact on our city, and Harvey Milk, of course, is a huge part of that. So to have this ship now parked here in our city is just amazing, and, and we've gotten a front row seat to it all day, right? Yeah, absolutely. Such a contrast in history, but such a momentous moment happening right now in the San Francisco Bay. Thanks, Kelsey. We'll be right back.